Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said he would return when our days parallel the days of noah as we read in matthew 24 37 through 39 but as the days of noah were so also will the coming of the son of man be for as in the days before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away so also will the coming of the son of man be to find out what parallels our days with the days of Noah, we need to go back to the book of Genesis. Genesis 6, 1 and 2. Now it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. Who were the sons of God who took wives for themselves of all whom they chose? We find the answer in the book of Job. Job 1, 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. Job 2.1 Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. The sons of God in Genesis 6.2 are fallen angels, who married and produced offspring with human women, in order to try and destroy humanity by preventing the Savior Jesus Christ from being born. Genesis 6.4 There were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Who were the giants that the daughters of men bore to the sons of God? The giants were half-human, half-fallen angel hybrids known as the Nephilim. Just as in the days of Noah when fallen angels mated with human women and the result was a half-angel, half-human hybrid known as the Nephilim, many end-time scholars today believe Jesus will return when human genome is again being tampered with. Are we seeing any signs of genetic tampering in humans today? Let's talk about gene editing and its potential to change lives. It's because of CRISPR, a technology that's not even 10 years old and can basically perform surgery on our genes. The inventors got a Nobel Prize for it in 2020. CRISPR fans say it'll fight diseases and improve crops. Other people, well, Hollywood tapped into their fears a long time ago. Genetics, what can it mean? The ability to perfect the physical and mental characteristics of every unborn child. At least one scientist has crossed the line. There will be someone somewhere who is doing this. If it's not me, it's someone else. So how does gene editing actually work? Can CRISPR be used to cure disease? And how far should we be allowed to go in transforming the human race? Genes are the blueprint for making everything the body needs, and human beings have more than 20,000 of them. Genes are made up of DNA, and that instructs the cell how to make a protein. Those proteins carry out the functions of the body and determine the way we look. But some gene variations can make us sick. Scientists, though, may now have the unprecedented power to change those genes. It's all because of the work done by two Nobel Prize winning scientists. Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Doudna. What they discovered has unleashed a whole new era of genetic engineering that's advancing just about every day. The tool is called CRISPR-Cas9. It's simple to use and cheap, and that makes it revolutionary because it could treat, perhaps even cure, genetic diseases like muscular dystrophy, cystic fibrosis, even cancer. And a lot of attention has been on sickle cell disease. In fact, scientists have already used it on a woman named Victoria Gray. She was the first person in the US to receive a CRISPR-based treatment for the disease. Doctors infused her with more than 2 billion of her own genetically edited bone marrow cells. More than a year later, almost all her symptoms are gone. Just to be clear, CRISPR is being used here like any other medical treatment. Any genetic changes stay with that patient. They aren't passed on to their children. They're not hereditary changes that affect the human gene pool forever. That's because scientists are fixing faulty genes in somatic cells. Basically all the cells in our bodies except the single cell sperm and egg. 
And it's important to point out the patient is an adult who's consented to the treatment. But some are suggesting using CRISPR on early embryos to make the genetic fix. And for a lot of safety and societal reasons, scientists say that's a step too far. But that didn't stop a Chinese scientist from going there. In 2018, He Jiankui announced the birth of the world's first CRISPR-modified babies, twin girls known only as Lulu and Nana. He had altered a gene to try to protect them from HIV because their father has AIDS, but he did it while the girls were still in a Petri dish. And that's why his use of CRISPR technology is a problem. He genetically altered what are called germline cells, the sperm, the egg, or in the case of the twin girls, a fertilized egg at the single cell stage. Changes to DNA here appear in every cell in a person's body. You might say that's an efficient fix, but those genetic changes are permanent and are passed on to future generations. Plus, this is uncharted territory. Scientists say there's a very real risk that an edit could cause a mutation in the genome with side effects that we just can't predict. There's also the issue of consent. The girls obviously had no say in the changes made to their bodies. Editing the germline was really a, a bright line that should not be crossed. Ta Zhang Kui took it upon himself to move ahead with um, a very controversial and, and troubling application of this technology. That experiment alone raised the specter of designer babies, making people smarter, stronger, maybe more attractive. It would likely only be available to uh, people with significant means or wealth um, and this has the potential to really increase inequality in our society. So what's being done to regulate it? 75 countries already prohibit the use of CRISPR in human reproduction, but many scientists and governments agree more rules are needed. Right now, we have an international commission that started to draft some guidelines. There are significant differences among scientists on whether and when um, heritable genome editing should be used. There really needs to be a chance for uh, broad public and societal conversations to think about um, whether we want to use this technology at all. None of that, though, has stopped scientists from experimenting with CRISPR, in plants and animals at least. So what happened to the man who did interfere? Well, He Jiankui was sentenced to three years in prison and banned from working on reproductive medicine for life. And the twin girls, no one really knows where they are or whether they're healthy. We don't even know who else in the world is trying this technology. There's a good chance someone will misuse it and potentially change the human race. Satan and the fallen angels not only corrupted human DNA, but also corrupted all flesh, as we read in Genesis 6, 5 through 13. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping thing and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God, and Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Are we seeing any signs of genetic tampering in animals today? Technology is also getting into the resurrection business. A Dallas firm, Colossus Bioscience, has raised more than $200 million to bring back some extinct species. Now, this is a bit of their corporate pitch. Listen to this. How do you accomplish the seemingly impossible task of recreating a life so far beyond our reach? You go big. We believe in our duty to take the life science breakthroughs we built our mission upon and put them to work in service of reversing what humanity did to the dodo. Our efforts aren't siloed, and our vision isn't limited to the dodo. I read about this, Raymond. They, they've raised, what, 150 million bucks to genetically engineer the dodo bird. 
which <laughs> did go extinct in the late 1600s? They're also trying to recreate the woolly mammoth, Laura, and then they plan to release these creatures back into the wild. Reviving these ancient creatures in a lab has been tried before. <laughs> This is what I think we're going to see a little bit of, because they, you know how they're creating these things? They're taking preserved DNA, which was the Jurassic Park storyline, and commingling it with living relatives, yeah, so what birds that are close to these. Yeah, what could go wrong? Uh, they don't call, know what they're creating. Wait, well, call me crazy, but, and I know a lot of people do, but... I will say that the Velociraptor is the single most terrifying creature that was ever in a movie. I don't yes. like the idea of creating new species and releasing them into the wild. They don't know what's going to happen. Once again, Bible prophecy is exactly in line with world events. As science races to alter DNA and genetically modify babies, the potential to change the human race forever seems just a few years away. Do not be deceived. The sin of humanity has cursed this world with sickness and death. No technology can ever change that. No genetic alteration can bring forgiveness. Only faith in Jesus Christ can. Satan wants to seduce humanity into thinking they can become perfected, godlike beings who can live forever all based on their own ingenuity and strength. Also, the devil can corrupt the image of man further and bring them into rebellion against God and ensure damnation for as many people as possible. This corrupted world is going to end and everything with it. But believers in Jesus Christ will not only live to see a new earth, they will receive a new, perfect, incorruptible body. We do not have to seek genetic perfection because Jesus has already lived a perfect life for us. It just takes faith in Him as the Savior who died for your sins to receive eternal life, forgiveness in one day, and eternal body as well. 1 Corinthians 15, 51-55 Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? Verse 51 tells us we shall not all sleep, meaning we shall not all die. There is going to be a whole generation of believers who are going to do an end run on the grave. We will be caught up in the twinkling of an eye. We will receive immediately an immortal, imperishable, incorruptible body. We will be caught up to be with the Lord. At the same time, those who have died, who are dead in the Lord, their bodies will be raised, and the Lord will bring their perfected spirits with them, and they'll be reunited, and their bodies will be changed. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15-18 For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Stay tuned as we watch Bible prophecy unfold right before our very eyes. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. 
believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.